Welcome to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast, where we aim to give swimming the coverage and publicity it deserves. Every week, we celebrate the sport we love with amazing special guests and topics from around the swimming pool. And now, here are your hosts, Scott and Dan. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. Another special episode for you, no guests this week, but we are reviewing the US trials. Dan, obviously this is a massive, massive meet. I don't think us Brits can truly comprehend the size of it until maybe one day we get invited there. But in terms of leading up to the Olympics, this is the biggest meet, basically, to pay attention to. Uh, I agree with you. Yes. I mean, I'd love to go to Omaha. I mean, we, we saw on Twitter the, the basically the building of the pool, the filling of the water into the pool, um, the massive, it's, it's only in America that you see the massive scoreboards on the ceiling. You see it in like the basketball and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd love to go to a meet and it's, it's a proper big deal over there. The fireworks on the side, the atmosphere must be absolutely crazy. I'd love to go. So what we're going to do for this podcast is very much like the Aussie trials. We're going to pick out some of the best swims. Um, we're going to give you some names to pay attention to with Tokyo, obviously in mind with it being four or five weeks away. I think we're going to look at a few guys who are in direct competition with a few of the best British swimmers. I think we're mm-hmm. going to have a look at those as well. And yeah, we're going to talk about a lot of names missing out that people in Britain may only know these names. They may not know the ones who are coming through. I think, honestly, that's the biggest talking point to take away from this trial. Mm. Of course, you've had the the major superstars. They've they've turned up. They've done their bit. They've qualified for Tokyo. But actually, there's some names that I'm sure a lot of people will be like, oh, wow, they, they haven't made it. Um, yeah, it's going to be really interesting. But we're, we're so much to talk about. This could go on for a long time, this one. Yeah. So let's let's start at the best bit. And it's not, again, like Aussie trials, it's not in the pool. It's the meet itself. We said Omaha is a big deal. I really want to get an American swimmer on to speak about the romance of Omaha. I know that sounds all fruity and (laughs) lovey-dovey, but actually when you see the photos from the pool and the the atmosphere there, it's like no other swimming event ever that I've ever Mm. seen. It's raucous. It's so loud. It's so, so much pressure. And if anything, I said to you before we started recording, this is arguably bigger than the olympics this competition yeah i think cody miller has said it a few times on his youtube channel saying that actually the the pressure is for the trials mm. and then it kind of gets more relaxed at tokyo or, or gets more relaxed at the olympics because you know you've done it you've done the pressure bit it's now just about i don't know relaxing and performing on the the biggest stage um like i said at the very beginning i'd love to just go just for mm. one night and just see what it's like um God, I mean, if only it would be like that in this country, how good would it be? <laughs> oh, man, it'd be so good to go to. Now, let's, let's get into the swimming. We've spoken about the background and everything like that. If anyone from the UK isn't aware of it, go search, go search, go have a look mm. because it's, it's wild. Yes. Um, the first thing I want to bring up is something we talked about a little bit at Glasgow and then a little bit at Aussie Trials was swimmers swimming slower in finals. Now, it's not necessarily a worry. It's something you see quite a lot at Olympics, given the pressure. But we saw a lot of this meet. We saw a lot of finals slower than semifinals. And like I said, I think it's pretty much down to the pressure of the meet. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, you look at most Olympic finals and the finals are historically slower than the semifinals. Like, for example, Dressel broke the world record in the semifinal at Worlds. PC broke the world record in the semifinal at Worlds. And then they they go slower, only like a little bit, but not my much, but they do go slower in the final. And I think it's not about the time uh, in the in the final. It's just about winning, isn't it? Yeah, it and is. Of course, it in, is. The, in, the, in the semifinals, it is about the time because it's the top eight that make it to the final. Mm. Um so I think, yeah, there's a bit of pressure. And we were talking about it at Glasgow, weren't we, saying that it was almost like the, the main focus for the British swimmers to get quicker through the rounds. That's what yeah. we were looking for as well, let alone, you know, the coaches on pool side. Mm. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to put it down to the pressure. I mean, it's a big meet, like we've already said. Um, but the big guys did their jobs, I would say. Yeah. So let's start with one of the biggest names to come out of US trials. We've been keeping an eye on him for years. I tipped him for this trials to have a big breakout. I still 
before the meet was slightly unconvinced what his event was going to be. Mm. And he's gone and qualified for three very different events, which just shows his versatility. And if you don't know who we're talking about, it's Michael Andrew. He qualified for the 100 meters breaststroke, the 200 IM and the 50 freestyle, which is a wild program to be swimming. I mean, it's a real varied mixture, isn't it? I mean, mm. how many good 100 meter breaststrokers are actually out and out 50 meter freestylers? Mm. Not many. I mean, he came first in the 100 breaststroke, second in the 50 to Dressel, um, and of course the 200 iron, which is probably the biggest talking point. Um, yeah. Shall we get to that? Let's let's talk about the 100 breaststroke first, because he went a 58-1 in the heats and semi-final. Went a bit slower in the final, like we've discussed. We're not going to break that down too much anymore. But he's now a medal contender. I think he's got a 57 in him come Tokyo. Um, mm. So it's it's kind of another one to add to the PT and the Kaminga. I would agree with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I actually do believe he goes 57 point when Tokyo comes around. Um, and then if that's a case, if he does go 57 point, I, I would say he's on the podium for that. Um, if you're going to say PT wins and then Kaminga gets second, or it's basically going to be a, a dogfight for that silver position, silver medal, sorry, for... Um, yeah, for that race. But that's actually a really good sort of American records, of course. Uh, I can't remember. Is he now the third fastest? He must be the third fastest ever yeah, to do third to fastest the, to ever. The event. So a yeah. few kind of pointers in terms of British swimming to take away from the 100 breaststroke from Michael Andrew. I think that 100 breaststroke is bad for British swimming in two ways. One, yeah. it's going to be hard now to see James will be get onto that podium as realistic as I'm being. I'm not saying it's impossible. Will be always turns up for finals. And the he fact does. that Andrew hasn't at US trials, let's say, is a big feather in his cap. And I'm sure training with PT, he's he's got all the confidence in the world. And then the four by 100 medley. Now we've always said the big advantage British women have over America is the fact that America never had a breaststroker. They have one now. I know it's not PT world, but they have one. And the difference between Ryan Murphy and our backstroker and Andrew and PT. It- yeah, it is a bit of a shame. It's a shame on a British point of view, like you're saying. Um, I think America do go as favorites for that relay event now because mm-hmm. Ryan Murphy, we're going to get onto Ryan Murphy. He did a pretty good 100 meter backstroke this meet. Um, and then you've got Michael Andrew doing a very good 100 breaststroke. Then you've just had Dressel do a very good 100 fly. And you think, oh, it might already be mm. won by that point. But you never know. I mean, we're going to make the final. Anything can happen in a final. They yeah. never, DQs could happen. I don't want anything. don't want people to get DQ'd. But, you know, <laughs> these things can happen. Um, I still think we're definitely going to get on the podium. I think we get mm. silver. Um, it's At just worst. now, I think, I think they're a little bit too far ahead now, America, just because... Of Michael Andrew on that that mm. breaststroke leg, unfortunately. Now he also did a pretty impressive fifty freestyle. He went a twenty one four. So there's all the chance in the world he could podium there. You got a lane, you got a chance. We'll get into Dressel's time a little bit later on. But the two hundred IM, like you said earlier, let, let's break this down because mm. he's now number one in the world. He is, and there's a lot to improve on, but also a lot to like. It's, it's a weird one. It's a weird one. Yeah. You, for the first 150, it's incredible. I've never yeah. seen someone take out a 200 IM as brutally fast as he did. I mean, to put it into perspective, his fly split, split to start with was a 23.7, mm. which is, that's approaching a 50 point for a 100 meter fly to lead off a 200 IM. That, that's fast. His backstroke yeah. leg, he went at 29.2 okay not setting the world alight breaststroke split a 32 one which, which is, is good. setting the world alight yeah <laughs> yeah so at that turn he was almost a second and a half under lochte's incredible world record of one he was 54 and then he brings it back in a 29 nine which mm. is bang average Oh, I'd probably say it's less than average, if if I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I remember watching the the race, actually, literally before we started recording, and Phelps was on the comms, and he was watching it. It was like, he was almost speechless by that Mm. first 50-meter split. Who goes 23-7 at the start of a 200 IM? Um, I mean, the 100 flyers are doing well if they do that sort of split. Um, 
and you just knew he they, they were sort of saying before they even dived in you've got to take it quite steady because you need to save your legs for the speed. pressure can front crawl leg at the end he went out 23 7 held it on the two on the the backstroke leg which is you know 29 points is a pretty average sort of time or the, the standard time the breaststroke split was absolutely phenomenal and then at 29 9 i mean it hurt big time you could see the, the stroke was shortening very now, short. i think he I actually think he took a breath on the final stroke into the wall, which is mm. how much he was he was dying. But uh, so yeah, interesting swim. I know I, we say it's our bang average freestyle split, but all year I've actually been watching Michael Andrews 200 IMs all year. So all year he has been really struggling with that freestyle leg, no matter how easy he takes it out to get it below a 29 or a 30, no matter what he does before. So I think he's just turned into the tactic of, you know what? I'm going to go hell for leather to the 150 and hang on for dear life because yes. that that's clearly from watching all of trials and what he's done i think that's the only way he can do it because of the training program he's on which is that ultra short race pace training so yeah well that's another sort of side of it because uh, you look at phelps and he says actually that's a training error i mean you can't you can't be a good 200 i emma if you're just going to do 15 meter, 25 meter sprints the whole time in training, um, I can completely see where he's coming from because he his mentality is that to be a good 200 meter swimmer, you've got to train as a 400 meter swimmer, and if you want to be a good 50 meter swimmer, you've got to train as 100. Basically, you're over, over distancing yourself in training, and of course, with Michael Andrew, he is effectively under distancing himself every time in training because it's all fast twitch for him, which kind of surprises me. The reason how or how he's so good at 200 IM if that's the type of training he does, but he's so good at every single stroke. Um, yeah, very. It's a, it's a very interesting swim. So his final time in the final was 155.4, which is, like you said, the leading time in the world right now. And he has to go in favour for the 200 Yeah, IM, I mean, so. in, this, in the semi-final, he went a 155.2, which is 0.7 faster than Duncan Scott's gone, which is a yeah. distance. That's a, that's a yeah. fair distance. It is. The, the only thing I'm going to say in terms of British swimming is Duncan Scott loves chasing people down and he's a 200 freestyler. He swims the 400 every now and again. He's got that back end speed. So what's going to be really, really fun to watch is that last 50 and him charging because Michael Andrews, he's going to be dying. Yeah. Well, I think that's, that's the clear tactic for Duncan. If, you, if you're on Michael Andrews' hip and you turn on the breaststroke to front crawl turn, Oh, to be Duncan's... honest, hip hip is going to be some time though. Well, yeah, that'd be that'd be quite <laughs> nice, wouldn't it? But that that's the tactic, is what I'm trying to say. Is like if you're in within distance of Michael Andrew on that turn, then you mm. know you're going to get him. It's just about how fast you want to take it out and how much you're going to have left on that final 50 meters. So it's going to mm. be a fascinating race either way because is, you know he's going to he's going to fade away. But unless he changes his tactic, but I don't think he will now. No, I, d I don't think he does. But either way, I am glad Michael Andrew has found some Olympic events for him mm. to race and race them at high, high quality. And it's going to be entertaining. What more can you ask for from a swimming race? Um, I, know. I think the other thing to take away from this 200 IM, Lochte unfortunately missed out on the Olympic team at the age of tw uh, 36, 26, yeah. almost. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a shame. It's not a big surprise, if I'm perfectly honest. 36 and the, the races he races, it, you mm. don't really see many old guys racing them. They're usually just the 50s that they carry on to that sort of age. It's a shame not to have him at the Olympics. Um, I'm not sure if it's the end of him yet. I'm not well, quite you, sure on you, that one. Did you see the interview that he did at the end? Very emotional because it was kind of like the journalists were asking him questions as though this was the end, but he didn't want to call it the end because he enjoys swimming so much. Mm. Um, and the summers, I think it was another uh, press conference. I think it was with Michael Andrew and Ryan Murphy. And they were saying how much of a role model Lochte is. And it kind of like started tearing Lochte up a bit. Um, really quite an, quite an emotional interview actually, but um, big shame. Big stalwart of the sport. He's second most successful swimmer ever. Mm, in, yeah. in my opinion, behind Phelps, I know that you've got Spitz and people like that, but if Phelps wasn't around, Lochte would have won multiple, multiple Olympic golds all over the place. Okay, so that's that's one person done. I, I'm not sure how long we've been going for, but that's one person done. <laughs> yeah, Shall we talk about a big name on the women's side who looks likely to break a world record? There's several that we could talk about. Mm. Lily King. Yep. Yeah. Where do we start? If anyone has watched Cody Miller's vlogs recently, she's she appears in them quite regularly. They're training partners. Yeah. 
the impression you get is that she's trained straight through this meat because she's training by herself. She's not tapered down with Cody. So the fact that she's gone a 10479 to me shows a world record's coming. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. I, I'm pretty sure that she wouldn't have tapered at all for this meet. Mm. Um, and to go a 64 point for 100 breaststroke untapered, blimey, are we looking at a 63 in Tokyo? I'm going to say yes. Honestly, I Ooh. do. I think she, she goes a world record. And um, with doing that, she then defends her title, which the Olympic title for women's 100 breaststroke has never been defended before. So it's going to be a, a lot of that. history. A lot of history being broken if if she were to do it, of course. Mm. Um, but I can't look past her at the moment. Is there no. anyone else in the world? You might have some Italian breast chokers. I might put a hand up. They've not gone 64, though. <laughs> no, they haven't gone. They've gone 65, but I think King goes 63. And she just looks looks good. And it wasn't just the 100 breast choke, actually, that, that surprised me. Mm. It was the 200. I mean, I, I knew she could do it because of ISL and et cetera, et cetera. But she's just gone a 221.7. Well, she's never overly performed in the 200 breaststroke long course so i think she's really struggled to make it out of semi-finals at major meets at it but yeah. she, like you said she's gone a 221 that makes the final might not quite be on the podium but i didn't expect that from her well if she's untapered like we think she is she's mm. got the potential to go 220 and then then it's in podium range mm. definitely um, I mean, we like to think that Molly Renshaw is potentially favourite or the South African favourite to uh, to win the 200 breaststroke. But if she's going to knock out a 220, she's mm. put her hand right up and said, actually, hang on, I have a great chance of winning gold or definitely a medal anyway. Um, mm. And actually, she didn't win the race at US Trials. It was Annie Laser. And that's a pretty, pretty good story going behind that um, because I think one of her family members died uh, some months ago, maybe uh, maybe a year ago now. And I think Lily King promised her family that she would push Annie Laser all the way to get through to the Olympics or qualify mm. for the Olympics. Yeah. And, and that's pretty much what sport's all about, isn't it? It's about the support, the friendship, pushing each other to get better every day. So that was a really yeah. nice story. Um, and again, if if we're talking about Lily King to be on the podium potentially for 200 Brush Annie Laser has to be as well, doesn't she? So, yeah. So, uh, I mean, Lily King's probably one of the strongest performers at trials and you, I mean, we were speaking beforehand. We, you think that she is very much at her peak at these Olympics and could be doing something very, very special. She's definitely a name to keep an eye on in Tokyo. Yes. Yeah. Next person to keep an eye on who swam well in terms of world rankings, mm. in terms of himself. I think there's a lot more to come. Ryan Murphy. Yeah, we're very much in two minds here. You think he did very much average. Uh, and I agree with you. I, on I the... say average. <laughs> Look at the times. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, average is a bit of a, a, a... What kind of word is it? The wrong word? <laughs> Let's just use the wrong yeah. word. Because um, 154.2 for a 200 backstroke, uh, that, well, that's quicker than Luke Greenbank did at Europeans. And we were pretty stoked about that time from Luke Greenbank. So we can't be like... Actually, it's, that's a bang average time. It's not. It's a very good time. And then uh, is it the world leading time for 200 backstroke? I can't remember, actually. But it's there or thereabouts anyway. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I wasn't. I was quite happy with his 200 backstroke. It was like that's a, a decent time for him. But the 100 backstroke, I was impressed with. 52 mm. 2, he went in the semi and a 52 3 in the final, pretty much the same sort of time. As far as I remember, that is the world leading time for men's 100 backstroke. It is. Backstroke. It is. So, his PB, yeah. he's still PB plus what point five. Mm. I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm just not sure if that world record's going because you look at his form from Rio and from trials to Rio, he didn't overly change much. He didn't improve that mm. massively. But you know, as five years down the line, maybe he he's figured out trials quite comfortably now. He went mm. slower in the final, like a lot of the swimmers. Maybe there's a lot more to come. Maybe there are world records to come. It just I, I thought he'd go I, I I just thought he'd go into the Olympics with no doors ajar. And I think there's open doors for people to beat him. Well, I was gonna say the, the biggest takeaway is actually he was pushed all the way in each race because back mm. USA are known for pretty strong backstrokers, aren't they? Um and he's 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 stopped them from coming through effectively. Um he's he's still the man to beat. We said that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For age, ages ago now, because he's obviously looking to defend his titles, both the hundred and the two hundred. Um, for me, I think he does. He does do it in the hundred. I think the two hundred is up for grabs. 
Mm. I think maybe I'm being harsh on the hundred, but the two definitely rile off for me is still mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Still in my eyes the slight favourite. Yes, yeah. Right, should we get on to superstar Reagan Smith? Well, this is a massive talking point. This is a massive talking point. Let's go with positives first, shall we? So, of course, it's, it's her first Olympics. She's 19 years old. I mean, if you're 19 years old and you're going to your first Olympics, you're going to be absolutely beaming with joy, aren't you? Yeah. She's yeah. qualified in the 100 backstroke and the 200 fly, uh, showing her versatility like we've always said. Uh, let's go with the 100 backstroke. So she went 57.9 in a semi, 58.3 in a final. So again, this is like a a similarity. Recur- going it's, on a, here. it's a recurring pattern. We won't. Yeah, yeah, we won't we go won't. on about it again anymore. Yeah. But um, 57.9. That's a you know, it's a pretty good swim, really. Um, five, four, five weeks out from Tokyo, you kind of expect that to come down to the world record. I suppose we put so much pressure on her because Kaylee McEwen has just gone the world record, and you think, oh, there's a little bit of come it's on. A few days before. Yes, yeah. So you would have thought that would have inspired her. I'm sure it did, but it just didn't quite happen for her. But still qualify for the Olympics. I mean, that doesn't matter at the trials. So you've got to, got to do it at the Olympics, haven't you? 200 fly was interesting. Came second behind Haley Flickener. And Flickener looked good, by the way, who's got a great chance of winning gold now. Mm. Um, but yeah, the biggest talking point was the 200 backstroke. Yeah, so she's a world record holder. She's gone a 203, which is miles ahead of everyone else. Country miles. Mm. And she missed it. Yeah, I, I don't. When you're the world record holder, maybe it's a bit of naive, naivety playing into it because she is only 19 years old. There's a lot of pressure when you're world record holder to make the team, and it's always competitive. Now her time wasn't dreadful. A 2:06.7 would make any other Olympic team around the world. Mm-hmm. The issue is you're a world record holder who's gone 2:03. So PB yep. plus three. At Olympic trials, which is close to Tokyo, not great. Yeah, and it's very similar to the Ryan Murphy thing, where I was saying where American backstroke is the best in the world, mm, and really good. If, if she hasn't tapered for this, I question the training because you can't just assume. Yes, okay, she's miles ahead of everyone else, not just in the country but the world. Mm. Um, was she complacent? I don't know. Was it the extra <laughs> pressure? Did the extra year not help? I, there's so many questions. But uh, ultimately, it's a massive shame because we tooted a horn and uh, we just thought it was a, an automatic world record. That's, that's the way we thought of it. Um, it's a huge uh, disappointment, I suppose. I don't know. Maybe she sets, Maybe she wins gold in the 100 back. Maybe not because Kelly McEwen's on fire. I just... Mm. She came out of nowhere to sm- set both... Well, not set, smash both of those world yeah, records smash. Previ- previously. Yeah. Maybe we're just expecting slightly too much for a, a young head. Hmm. Yeah, I'm like I said at the very beginning. She's 19 years old. Mm. It's a it's a very difficult situation. I mean, a lot of the swimmers have said, and we're going to get onto Simone Manuel, which is a big talking point as well. That they the the extra year training hasn't helped. It's more of the mental side that they've got to mm. try and almost reset themselves again to go another year to try and be at their very best. I don't know if that's a a big issue for Reagan being so so young, but. Yeah, it's a really interesting one. And now, in my head, there's only one summer to win Olympic gold now for that 200 backstroke. And that's going to be McEwen. It's done. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I was really looking forward to That was one of my big races I was really looking forward to was Reagan Smith versus Kaylee McEwen. Um, and it's not going to happen. It's such a shame. But what can you do? That's the, that's <laughs> These, the nature that's of trials, trials, isn't it? That is that's trials. the nature of trials. It's very cutthroat. So, yeah. I mean, in reality, I do think we're just being slightly too harsh on Reagan Smith. I think there's a big future to come. I think the 100 back, the battle with Kaylee McEwen still on. I think it's going to be exciting. It's advantage Mm. to Kaylee McEwen right now. It's a huge disappointment to miss the 200 back. Bit unexpected, but I I, I just think we're being slightly too too harsh on a young head who had, you would have thought she had a lot of pressure going into this week. Um... So while we're talking about swimmers who didn't make maybe the team as expected, I think we, we need to talk about a few names who missed out on spots. So a few, I call them brand names. So over here in the UK, because of ISL and because of the recent Olympics, these are names that you guys should all know and be mm. made aware of, but they missed. It, yep. It's quite shocking. And it, it kind of shows this, this new era of American swimming that's going to become upon us in Tokyo, I would have thought. Yeah, changing of the guard. Yeah. yeah. So if we go through the names who who unfortunately missed out, 
So we've already spoken about Ryan Lochte. Wasn't too much of a surprise, but sad to see him not make the team. Smoliga, who was a big star at ISL. She didn't qualify for the 100 back, which I kind of expected her to be the name behind Reagan Smith. Yeah, yeah. Um, she didn't qualify for the individual 100 free, which she had a shot with. She was fastest going into the final. She does make a relay, but I guess that just shows the depth that American swimming have. Yep. Um, Nathan Adrian, Matt Grievers, Anthony Irving. These are all big known names. They've all missed out. They were close. Nathan Adrian got the closest in the 50 free. He just got touched out. It was hard to see because I love Nathan Adrian, but those three guys, along with Lochte, it it kind of, like I said, shows a changing of the guard. Um, Ryan Held missed out in the 100 freestyle. He was second favorite in my eyes behind Dressel. Mm. Bit of a surprise. Blake Peroni it- only going for a relay. I mean, actually, yeah, Ryan Held didn't even make the relay. Yeah, that was the big shock, wasn't it? Since yeah. he was odds on, or well, not odds on, but <clears throat> one of the favorites to go for the individual and mm. to not even make a relay spot. Whew, that just shows the pressure, doesn't it? That's uh, That's trials for you. It does. Um, no Carson Foster, no Will Lickon, no Kevin Cordes, no Cody Miller. It like these are names that have been around for a very long time. Yeah. And I don't know, as as someone who doesn't take a massive deep dive into USA swimming, it's a little bit of a shock for me. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's still more names that we've missed out. We'll mention them later on. Um, Kathleen Baker was one that, but so apparently she broke her foot. So there's a slight, not excuse, but you know, there's a reason for yeah. her not performing. Um, yeah, I think with the older guys, like you say, Loxy, Adrian, and Grievers, they are at the tail end of, the, of their career. So it is the the changing of the guard. So it's not too much of a surprise. Maybe Nathan Adrian had a great chance, which he showed. He came third in the 53, but mm. didn't make the 100 freestyle final. Matt Grievers, still still capable, came sixth in the 100 backstroke. So these guys aren't going slow. Well, Matt uh, Grievers, I believe, is still declared for ISL next year. So he's still racing. Still going. Yeah, absolutely still going. We spoke about Ryan Howard, Blake Peroni. I thought he was going to be going for the 200 free or even the 100 free, but nope, just for a relay. I mean, that's... Uh, some of the some of the names are mind boggling, and I suppose one of the biggest ones was was Simone Manuel not going for the hundred freestyle to defend her title, but she is going for the fifty freestyle. I'm glad she got there for the fifty. It's quite mm. a sad story for the hundred free. She I don't think she even made the final, did she? For the hundred free, no, 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 she didn't. Um, she's had a tough year of training. If you listen to the interview she did. She's mm. suffering from something called overtraining syndrome. So it's basically an increased heart rate, finding things quite hard. It's almost a little bit like depression as well at times. So she yeah. opened up about it. She didn't use it as an excuse. She yeah. just used it almost like an explanation. And sometimes these things are needed when it is yeah. such a shock. Um, but she's in, still on the team on the 53. I think well-deserved, well-deserved. It sounds like she's been through a hell of a year. Um yeah, before we get on to the, back to the positives, because there's, there's tons more to speak about. Some ISL names who missed out, who we've been tooting the horn up for for a very long time. I know. Yeah. No, no Margallis for Abby Wood to deal with mm-hmm. in both or the 200 IM for Abby Wood, but she also didn't get in on the 400 IM. I thought she was a shoe in. Yeah. Coleman yeah. Stewart was a guy who looked like he was coming through. He looked really good at ISL. He looked like he might start challenging Ryan Murphy at the 100 back. Didn't happen for him. Kelsey Dahlia, Bida Nelson, Maxime Rooney, Molly Hannes, Emily Escobedo. There's, there's names galore here who we have suddenly become accustomed to because of mm. ISL. And I think maybe that's just skewing our judgment of how good they are. Yeah, I mean, with ISL, of course, it's short course. And if you actually look at all of those names there, their underwaters are pretty good. And so I wonder if those are short course swimmers more so than long course swimmers, especially Coleman Stewart. I, I, I was a big fan of Coleman Stewart at ISL and I thought this is the next best thing. He's going to be maybe potentially better than Ryan Murphy with the underwaters and the, the technique that he's got really shocked by him not going. Um, I suppose Mark Gallis is probably just as big a shock because um, we thought, well, if Abby is going to win a medal, you're going to have to beat Mark Allison. She's not even there now. So you think, oh, hey, up, that's great news, I suppose. But, you know, really unfortunate that she doesn't make the team. Um, yeah, I'm just going to repeat all the names you said. But this, yeah, very, very interesting. I just wonder the transition from, let's say, 25 yard pools, 
going up to 50 meter long course walls, whether that's a big impact or not. I want to get on an American who, because they race it very late up in the season, the NCAAs, they race short course yards the whole year. And then you yeah. transition to 50, 50 meters. Yeah. And now I, me and you, we trained short course for pretty much our whole career up until you went to seniors. And yeah. when you race long course, it's tough. But these guys are, they're not 16, they're not 14 year olds. They're, they're experienced heads. I mean, yeah. maybe we're making excuses, but, or maybe we need to get someone on to explain to us just quite how hard that transition is. We'll, we'll do some hunting for some good podcast guests. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's such a, I mean, the list of names, I mean, we must have listed about 10, 15 names here. Um, and yet the American team is still going to be very good, you know? So, um, I suppose it bodes well for the next three years when trials come around again to see if these guys can actually get their spot uh, for Paris because I assume Lo- Ryan Loxy, Nathan Adrian, Mike Grievers, Anthony Irvin, they're not going to be there because you I'd know, be they're, surprised. They're at the end of their careers. But for, for these guys, they're in their early 20s or maybe even younger. They should be, uh, you know, putting their mm. hand up for for the position. What this does do is back up our kind of speech beforehand when we, we previewed this podcast is American trials are tough. This is probably the hardest, the, be- the best, the biggest swimming competition in the world. You've got those star studded names who are not on the team. Yep. Any, anywhere yep. else in the world, you put all of those into British trials, they probably all go. Yep. That's, that's just how competitive American trials is. So before we get on to the big brand names to finish, We'll talk a little bit about Ledecky and Dressel. Why don't you run through some other standout performances and people who made the team maybe yeah. unexpectedly, but definitely deserved to make the team on the back of Omaha? Yeah, well, the, let's start with uh, Rianne White. She uh, qualified for both for the 200 and the 100 backstroke and actually goes in third fastest in the world for the 200 backstroke. So actually she's almost taking the place of Reagan Smith. So she might actually... Uh, caused Kaylee McEwen a couple of problems there. You had Kieran Smith qualifying a 200 and hit a PB in the 400 as well. So we're going to see him in both of those events. I want to uh, talk Hayley. about that. Wait, 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 wait. I want to talk about that. The 200 free in America should be stronger. I agree with you. Yeah. And actually we were saying on the Aussie trials, weren't we, that actually these times should be quicker than what they are. I think maybe because we've, we watched the 200 free at British trials and we were like, Oh my what Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. And you kind of expect it from mm. the, the powerhouses of America and Oz. Yeah. Very strange. I mean, the winning time, I can't remember what it is top of my head. It was like one forty five mid or something like that. And you know, Duncan and Tom are going a second quicker than that. Same with the Aussie trials. There was a yeah. mid one forty five. I think, blimey, hey, I, I do there, believe Duncan's got a great chance. Don't get me wrong; their four by two relays are going to be right up there. There's a lot of depth, mm. but the it's top the guy, the top guy, is not what it used to be. You've gone from Phelps, who did a one forty three around that sort of region, and then suddenly, and of course, Lochte was doing similar times as well. And mm. now you've gone right the way back up to one forty five. And you think, oh, that, that void hasn't quite been filled, but. Um, yeah, that was really quite interesting. So Kieran Smith, hopefully, will will fill that void. I suppose we'll um, see. We will see. Go on, yeah. More more standouts. Haley Flickener, American record in the two hundred fly. She's also qualified in the four hundred IM. I think that was pretty much a shoe in. I would have said yeah. for her. Um, Abby Weitzel, excellent swim at trials. Both qualified in the hundred and the fifty three. Uh, and this was a really good swim. I don't know if you saw this, but Tori Husk, American record in a hundred fly, fifty five point six. Mm. Um, fantastic Surprising. swim from her. Yeah, came out I mean, of what, nowhere. I know maybe maybe people in America are aware of her, but I didn't see this coming. <laughs> yeah, well, that's one of the ones coming through. And uh, with a time like that, she's going to pose a real threat for that podium. So watch mm. out for her. Um, other names, Nick Fink qualified for his first Olympics in the 200 breaststroke. Chase Callis qualified for the 200 and 400 IM. Tom Shields, again, qualifies for the 100 fly, not for the 200 fly, which he he was pretty good at 200 fly at ISL. So that kind of surprised me a little bit. But And that might be that change from short course to long course that we're talking about yes yeah and he's very good at underwaters as well isn't mm. he tom shields so but he qualifies for the 100 with dressel uh and then one big name going to her fourth olympics is alison schmidt she doesn't she doesn't just qualify she doesn't just qualify for the relay as well but she qualifies for the individual 200 i mean that's a fantastic fantastic uh swim from her she's almost had a second career she's had a second yeah. wave when she's i don't know how old she is now but she's 
she was swimming with Phelps. They're like best buddies. Yeah. They're both yeah, yeah. Baltimore natives. So yeah. the fact that she's still going and like you said, she qualified within her own right. And she was underrated at ISL last year. I actually she thought she was really, she was a standout 200 freestyler. She didn't win because Shahorn Horn, he obviously took all the plaudits. She's undefeated. Mm. But Alison Smith's kind of a quiet name to keep an eye on. I think she's an experienced head who might go quite well at Tokyo. She kind of reminds me of two different strokes, but it's a, she reminds me of Emily Sebum, mm, where yeah, qualifying yeah. for the, the fourth Olympics, they're in their late 20s, early 30s. I actually don't know how old Schmiss is, but um, she's going to be around that sore region anyway. Mm. Um, and you just know she's going to perform. That's what yeah. she does. She's, she's going to, she's going to be potentially on the, on the podium or there or thereabouts. Um, Although the 203 is extremely stacked on the women's side right now. So she'd be doing extremely well to make a podium there. But you never know. I think she's good enough to make a final. Um, mm. And then, like I've always said, if you've got a lane, you've got a chance. So, um, yeah, congratulations to her fourth Olympics. I mean, that's good going, especially when you're, when, when you're a summer as well. Because yeah. it's grueling, the training. So shall we finish off this podcast kind of reviewing US trials and the, the big name swimmers, basically, just for the Brits to pay attention to, rather than going in depth of every single race, we could be here all night. Yep. Should we finish with the two biggest, Ledecky mm-hmm. and Dressel? So, do you want to start with Ledecky? Let's go with Ledecky, yes. Um, my biggest takeaway was that she is clearly untapered. Mm. Absolutely no rest whatsoever. She has trained through, I mean, the times I think pretty much show that still managed to win by quite some distance in those events yep. as well um which just shows how good she is if i go through it really quickly 200 free 155 1 400 free 401 2 800 814 6 and then she also did the 1500 15 point 40 which was an uh, hour after the 200 free final yeah which I, well, yeah i mean you kind of have to say that which uh which just shows how good she is at that distance um and of course, because the 800 is the first time, uh, the 1500 is the first time it's going to be at the Olympics for a female, isn't it? So she's going to, I assume she's going to win. I can't think of anyone else who's going to cause her a problem in the 1500. So she's going to be the first female 1500 Olympic gold medalist, I would have thought. Um, I mean, Madeline Goff at the Aussie trials went 1545, I think, but I think... Yeah, I think she was more tapered than Ledecky. I mean, she looked heavy. I don't know if you saw that last she like, was... 25 meters of 200. It looked pretty mm. heavy. Um, I was going to say through the whole meet, it almost like, to me, it looked like she was just racing one pace the whole meet and that was it. Yeah, it seemed that way. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Um, the technique is so strong. It just, it looks like the, the, the stroke tempo has increased, which is frightening to think about with the distance mm. events. I mean, I've kind of, I've kind of said that the, world records for potentially all four of those races could go and it's not just going to be Ledecky you've got to talk about Titmus as well yeah who... see this was this was my main takeaway is Ledecky is clear head and shoulders favorite for the 15 the 8 mm. I think it's slightly more competitive than she's ever been used to at the four yes. because Titmus laid down a wild time and she is underdog for the two Yes. Well, she was never really, she shouldn't really be winning the 200 free with the likes of Pellegrini no, no. flying around, but she's obviously that good that she's able to, to swim that time and be world champion, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, my biggest race leading up to Tokyo was the women's 200 backstroke with Reagan and Kaylee. My biggest race now is the 400 free. Ledecky and Titmus. Oh, okay. It's a coin flip. I don't know who's going to win that. It's one, <laughs> it's one of the two because no one has been under... No one else has been under 358, let alone 357. So those mm. girls are miles ahead of the rest of the world. I mean, it's going to be, be that's going to be one hell of a head to head that one. Um, mm. Yeah, the eight and the fifteen, it's all it's all hers. But um, quick shout out actually to to Katie Grimes, who aged fifteen will be the youngest member of Team USA for the swimming uh, in the eight hundred. Fantastic! It's kind mm. of like uh, it's Ledecky uh, repeated. It is. It's like yeah, history repeats itself. Yeah, fantastic swim from her. I mean, that's going to be. Uh, a wealth of experience that she gains from that. Yeah. Either way, Ledecky expects some medals, expect multiple golds. She's, mm. she's a star. She's not exactly dropped off the pace at all. Nope. Um, it's whether she beats her own world records and how many races she does it in really yeah, pretty but much. I, I'm, yeah. I'm glad there's, I'm glad there's competition down a little bit lower at the races. And I think Timus might be there or thereabouts on the 800 as well. 
she might build a bit of confidence and maybe challenge the decky. We will, we will see. We'll we will out, see. Yeah. So one place and one place only to finish Caleb Dressel. Now, I don't like getting too excited about him because the times that he's beating or trying to beat the world records he's trying to get in the 100 free and the 50 free are fast and they are in super suits. There's a reason they haven't gone because they're impossibly hard to break. Yeah. Both of them are going in Tokyo. Oh, that is bold. Now, I've always said what it's like the, the second or third episode we ever did. I've always said Dressel is breaking that 50 freestyle world record. So I've I agree always with you on been that. on the fence and away with it. I'm like, no, there's no way yeah. no one can beat that without a super suit. So if anyone isn't aware, you don't know what time he went. He went a 21 0 4, mm. which equaled his PB. It's still yep. kind of in season for him. Let's be honest, his trials, yes, he's swimming fast, but that's that's good. <laughs> It's just a tiny bit good. I mean, it's not bad, is it? It's not bad. But I've always thought that he's going to break that world record because you can't have the best start in the world that we've ever seen ever mm. and not break that 50 meter freestyle world record. I think it goes. The 100 is a slightly different matter for me. I don't know if he gets that world record in the 100 free. He went, uh, he did it actually, he swam it really well. He went 48 2 in the heat, 47 7 in the semi, and then 47 3. Uh, in the final so he went quicker through the rounds Mm. but um, that's still some distance off that world record I know he's gone a 46 point before his PB or lifetime best Um, it's a big ask I mean I'm gonna stop the the issue I've got is I'm gonna stop sitting on the fence with him now I'm all in he blew me away these trials and you know what? The, the 50 on the last day was just mind-boggling to go that fast. But the, the one that stood out before that was the 100 fly. Do you know what my biggest takeaway? My biggest takeaway is that, you know, at the ISL, uh, where it's like a six-week, almost intensive racing, he gets mm. better every week, doesn't he? And it yeah, seems he's training like now to- should just be racing. Yeah, I mean, towards the meet, the end of the meet is when he swims his best time. So it's almost like you need you need to race more to get better performances out of him. Mm. Um Interesting. I mean, he's just a phenomenon, isn't he? He's just a, a world superstar. How many golds does he get? How many races does he enter? Because he swam the 200 free in the heats as well. So I'm assuming he's looking for a, a 4 by 200 heat swim, maybe even a final swim. I'm not so sure. So he went at 146.6, which might just make that team. Not quite sure. Yeah, we didn't actually mm. check that because we just we were just talking about his 50s and 100s, weren't we? But um, the 100 fly, that world record's going. He's now got the top four fastest times ever. Boy, I mean, he's just, he's a bit good. He's a bit special, isn't he? Mm. Um, I'm just excited to see him race. I, I, so am I. I'm getting, yeah. I'm getting ahead of myself. I fully admit that. <laughs> oh, he's so exciting. We need him in the sport because every time you, he stands on a block, you think, God, his start's going to be so good. And he gets mm. in the water, does the underwater. He's miles ahead for, after 50 meters. Then he starts his technique. You think, oh, that technique's pretty good as well. And then you look at the clock after he finishes. You think, oh my God, I've just seen it, one of the best that's ones the ever. Thing. It doesn't seem that fast when you're watching him. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. You're watching him, you're just like, oh, wh- whoa, okay. Because yeah. <laughs> first, the first heat swim of the 100 fly, he was definitely easy speed the whole race, and he went a 50.1. Just yeah, like, how mental is that? What Absolutely on incredible. Earth? Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of people on social media saying, hang on, he's just gone 51, 50.1 easy speed. And you think he could knock off two seconds there, at one or, you know, just over a second there. It's a, 40, it's a 48 on the horizon. I think that's slightly pushing it, but a, definitely a 49 low. Absolutely, I think he's going to do that. Um, I'm just super excited for mm. just to watch him swim. Uh, he's just bring on just, Tokyo. He's, bring he's on just Tokyo. Amazing. He's just amazing. Oh, I mean, we're going to talk about him a lot more when we do our full preview of Tokyo. We go day by day, event by event. We'll be really in depth then. But he's a superstar. He, he, yep. It's what swimming needs. Now Phelps has gone. Suddenly, another American's picked up the baton, and yep. because it's shorter distances, in my eyes, he's even more exciting. But that's just yes. the sprinter in yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's American trials. That's the names you need to pay attention to. Some names who unfortunately missed, who were a little bit surprising. And then a quick run through of the newcomers or, or the standout mm-hmm. other swims. What do we take away from American trials? 
There's quite a few things, actually. I think there was the end of an era for quite a few of these summers now, like the, the Nathan Adrians, uh, the Ryan Lochtes, the Matt Grievers, Anthony Irvins. I think it's the end of the road for them and they, they should retire. Pretty happy for what they've achieved, actually, ready for the young blood to come through. Um, my biggest thing is just it's how hard are trials? How hard are they? I mean, if you can get through trials, that's the reason why they perform at Olympics, because the pressure that they face at trials, if they can face that pressure, come through it then tokyo or not tokyo but olympics wherever it is seems like a breeze um and that's probably yeah. the reason why they put so much pressure on it so that they can p- perform on the biggest stage of all that's my biggest takeaway I don't know about you mine is the big guys look strong the mm. big big guys so your dressels your murphys your lily kings your michael Ledecky. andrew he's a big guy now ledecky they look really good they look mm. world class they look head of the field as expected like we said, world records are going to fall in Tokyo. I'm almost surprised none of them fell at trials, slightly. <laughs> yeah, well, they were close. They were close. I mean, yeah. Dressel was very close. Um, yeah. Because I've always said that Americans get their training cycle absolutely correct. And so if, they, if they're going their best times at trials, then something's gone slightly wrong somewhere because in four or five weeks' time, that's when they should be hitting their times. Uh, I'm kind of excited for Lily King, honestly. I think that this, she's going to swim the best times ever I, do, I honestly i think she's going to be at her absolute peak and it's not downhill from here i suppose it, if you look at a graph it might go downhill from here but she's going to be at that very pinnacle this mm. olympics um and i wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if she breaks a world record and goes 63 for 100 breaststroke awesome so that rounds up the last of our trials reviews ahead of tokyo from now on it is going to be interviews with british swimmers leading up to it and then just us previewing the races itself Pretty much, yeah, we do have, hopefully we've got a a guest lined up next week, but before we do that, we've got uh, an interesting podcast where we're going to make up our own ISL team with the draft. We are. are. Yeah. That's going to be fun to do. That should be out on Saturday, hopefully, if we get things lined up properly. Um, And until then, I hope everyone has enjoyed this kind of quick fire, loose breakdown of American trials. Like we said, we always like to keep things quite relaxed on here, not too formal, but mm-hmm. we've given you guys names to pay attention to. It's just going to be so exciting for Tokyo now. Mm. Um, we're the build up. The build up is basically complete now. We're just sort of waiting. We're we're biting at the bits, ready to go, aren't we? So yeah, it's going to be really good. Awesome. So if you have enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or subscribe to us on YouTube or any other of your podcast providing platforms. We are everywhere. Just search the Propulsion Swimming Podcast and you'll find us. From myself, Scott, it's been a pleasure to cover all of the trials and I just can't wait for Tokyo to come now. And we will see you guys at the weekend. Awesome. Thank you very much for joining us, guys. And we'll catch you on the next one. You've been listening to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast with Scott and Dan. We want to thank you for joining us and invite you to subscribe to the show as well as checking out the Propulsion Swimming YouTube channel for weekly tutorials and videos to get your swimming fix. We will be back next week. Until then, we'll catch you on the next one.